I didn't actually know that uh, you were raised a Catholic. I don't know why I didn't know that, but I didn't know it. Um, oh, yeah. No, it, it just informed my language. What happens, you, every day you're in school, first class is religion, of course. Those two things at the core of how I write, but also the language, the ideas, a lot of it came out of Catholic education. And my mother wanted to be, me to be an altar boy, so. Well, first of all, Mass then was all in Latin. Dominus Fabiscum. Mm. Suscipiat Dominus Sacrificium. Right. Sure, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, the fellow altar boy here. So, <laughs> so uh, uh, you had to learn the entire Mass in Latin. So you're there at, you're 4.30 a.m. for the, so you know, you're running down the street, it's pitch black night, you got your, you got your cassock behind you. I'm, Then the mass starts, and now, of course, my mother, her two sisters, entire Italian and Irish family are there to see me make my debut. And along with all the, the nuns, because they go to early mass before they go teach school. I grew up on Randolph Street with my sister Virginia. She was a year younger than me. My parents, Adele and Douglas. My grandparents, Fred and Alice. And my dog, Saddle. We lived spitting distance from the Catholic Church, the priest's rectory, the nun's convent, the St. Rose of Lima Grammar School, all of it just a football's toss away across the field of wild grass. I literally grew up surrounded by God. Surrounded by God and, and all my relatives. We had cousins, aunts, uncles, grandmas, grandpas, great-grandmas, great-grandpas, all of us were jammed into five little houses on two adjoining streets. And when the church bells rang, the whole clan would hustle up the street to stand witness to every wedding and every funeral that arrived like a state occasion in our neighborhood. We also had front row seats to watch the townsmen in their Sunday suits carry out an endless array of dark wooden boxes to be slipped into the rear of the freedmen's funeral home, long black Cadillac for the short ride to St. Rose Cemetery Hill on the edge of town. And there, all our Catholic neighbors, all the Zerillis, all the McNicholases, and all the Springsteens who came before, they patiently waited for us. Now, when it rains in Freehold, when it rains, the moisture in the humid air blankets the whole town with the smell of moist coffee grounds wafting in from the Nescafe plan on the town's eastern edge. Now, I never cared for coffee, but I loved that smell. 
It was comforting. It united our town just like our clanging rug mill in a common sensory experience. There was a place here. You could hear it. You could smell it. A place where people made lives, where they danced, enjoyed small pleasures, where they played baseball, and where they suffered pain and had their hearts broken, where they made love, had their kids, where they died, and where they drank themselves drunk on spring nights, and did their very best, the best that they could, to hold off the demons outside and inside that sought to destroy them, their homes, their families, their town. Here we lived in the shadow of the steeple, crookedly blessed in God's good mercy, one and all. In the heart stopping, pants dropping, race rioting, freakating, soul shaking, redneck, love and fear making, heartbreaking town of Freehold, New Jersey. Eight years old, running with a dime in my hand to the bus stop to pick up a paper for my old man. I'd sit on his lap in that big old Buick, I'd steer as we drove through town. He tossed my hair. And say, son, take a good look around. This is your hometown. It's your hometown. Your hometown. This is your hometown. This is your hometown.